Hey, welcome to my basement, everybody. Big hugs for all of you that are tuning in right now live to watch us. I know you are uh, probably uh, playing hooky from something, and I appreciate that very much. But we have got a very fun show for you today. Uh, one of my favorite people on earth is going to join us. Uh, I'm talking about Deadpool but also Jose Sanchez. And Deadpool actually didn't really mean all that much to me. Uh, I always thought the character was pretty cool until I saw the movie, but we're gonna talk about that in a second. Uh, my brother Jose is gonna be here, but first we wanna stream this uh, very cool segment that uh, Jose was uh, able to do with uh, somebody that you might recognize. They're making the movie. <laughs> so t tell me a little bit about a making, making this movie, uh, you know, R-rated Marvel movie. A lot of people were nervous. I yeah. think it's brilliant. How yeah. important was it to make it that sort of style of Deadpool? Um, there is no other style of Deadpool. Like, if you want to make a Deadpool movie, you make it rated R. If you're going to commit to making a movie that actually pushes the boundaries of comic book movies, you have to you have to raise the ceiling. And by doing that, we needed the flexibility and freedom of having being able to say and do anything. And that's that's Deadpool. And so that's that was what's really so cool important. about yeah. Fox that they let us do that. He's a total company man, as you can see. He's, I see. He's gone corporate. Yeah. Yes! He's born and raised um, in the rules. Yeah, can you imagine a PG-13 Deadpool? I, Some I people wouldn't can. Work. Yeah. Most executives of the studio can, yes. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he, yeah, that was, the, that was the rub. It's like, if you're going to make this movie, it's got to be R-rated. Can you make an R-rated film that will sort of do the business that another superhero comic book movie would, would do? And this is that movie, you know? And it's, it fits so well. The tone of it is just like pitch perfect, don't you think? I mean, pitch perfect wasn't as good as Dead. Yeah! That's the honest. Honest. Take that. Take that, ladies. Rebel Wilson. Singing. Rebel yeah. Wilson's pretty good, though. I mean, Damn teenage girls. I mean, Rebel Wilson versus Wade Wilson, that's a fight. I'd it, like it, to see. it is. It is. No, it's you're going to see it on February 12th. How to Be Single is coming out. You, you, Wade Wilson is fighting Rebel Wilson. Theaters everywhere. Valentine's Day weekend. So, Enjoy it. I mean, the, well, the most the most well important done. thing about the movie, I think, is that it, it appears that you guys had a lot of fun. Uh, nah. while making it. Was yes. it as much fun? Yes, uh, there was a lot of fun. The, you know, that was actually the um, probably the most harmonious set I've ever been on. And all, not only that, the studio when they greenlit the movie, I think yeah, they right. thought. It's amazing that you could hit a ball that hard and not actually have it connect with anything else on the table. <laughs> um, <laughs> Clearly. I'm just busting your balls. You actually, you did hit something. The thing about this particular film was that the, the, the studio felt like Deadpool was gonna be the troublemaker. They, we were the one movie that they thought, oh God, we're gonna get like crazy reports from that set, like nutty things are gonna happen, they're gonna go over budget, they're gonna completely like blow up the, the city. But actually we were the, one of the few movies that they had that finished on time and on budget. We were good to go. So it was actually like a, it was actually a, a surprisingly aerodynamic group of people, mainly because we were all just so friggin' happy to be there. Like we couldn't believe that we got to make a, a Deadpool movie. I'm not talking about the cast and the director and the producers. That's all a like, given. I'm talking about like the caterer and the props guy and every single person involved in Deadpool was so excited to make a Deadpool movie that um, that it was finally getting done. That it was uh, it was like a match made in heaven. You could feel a little bit throughout it that they were everyone was sort of like I think we're making something that hasn't been made before. And so that helps, that helps morale. And then I just, I sort of slid into this thing. He's been doing this for 11 years. He wrote on the first version of the script. Like, you know, he is Deadpool. And then I sort of joined on at the, you know, as this, as the train was coming into the station, so to speak. And uh, it's been amazing for me because I suddenly get to be a part of this incredible thing and all these people have been working together for so long and I got to inject a little bit of like fresh energy, you know, fresh eyes saying, wow, this stuff is amazing, it's so yep. funny. You know, it was great. It's an elaborate excuse to close down the viaduct as well. You're probably thinking, this was a superhero movie, but that guy in the suit just turned that other guy into a kebab. Surprise, this is a different kind of superhero story. That guy was up there before we got here. Hey, thanks for checking out that video on our EPN channel. It's just... <clears throat> Welcome back, everybody. Congratulations, Jose Sanchez. That's one of my favorite segments of all time and definitely uh, one of the coolest things we've done so far this year. And uh, that uh, came out of uh, a, uh, an invite that you got, I guess, during the Super Bowl festivities. How are you doing, Deadpool? Doing pretty good, man. Um, just having the time of my life right now. <laughs> Busy week. Uh, I got some, you know, premieres to cover. But other than that... Things are good. Awesome, Deadpool. Awesome. Did you, uh, did you, okay, can we have Jose now? We want to see your beautiful face. That is, Spoiler alert! Th that is amazing. There, oh, there you go. That's fantastic. Very good. Oh, you did your hair. You just, you, you floofed it up like that. That's, that's great. That's, that's, 
that's how it, that's how it takes. That's amazing. Okay, so um, first of all, I, I want to get into talking about the movie with you in a second here, but um, um, let's talk about uh, the uh, the event that you just had there and meeting uh, T.J. Miller and Ryan Reynolds. Let me let, let's get a little behind the scenes. How were those guys? Were they as cool as they seem in that video? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 sometimes you get that 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 feeling of like, oh, are these guys going to be swamped because they're doing interviews all day. Yep. In a bar, playing bar games with other journalists. I mean, they got to play darts. There was no beer pong, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. Which kind of saddened me a little bit because my pool skills were rusty. Yeah. Um, oh, we saw. Uh, I still hit that damn ball. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Deadpool's vision is clearly not as good as it is. But uh, yeah, you know, I mean, it seems like it was very, it was a very chill setting. They're not just like sitting in a chair the whole time. So I think they got a, a kick out of just not being, you know confined yeah. to a seats all day and having to talk to people and getting to walk around and do other fun things yep and it was just a, just a good style of interview yeah it's like yeah it's just very approachable everybody can hang out we're just hanging shooting some pool talking some dead pool that's awesome were you nervous no i had a few dead pools in me they yeah gave me, they gave me these coasters <laughs> they had very a drink nice of it. they had a drink yeah. called the deadpool they did yeah they did have the drink called the deadpool and then amazing. how did it work? Did you did you get to see the movie like on the same day just before you went to do the interviews or was it uh, earlier? No, I saw the movie. I saw the movie like, two days before the interview. OK, so because I mean, it's it's Super Bowl City in, yeah. in San Francisco. So it was a big festivities all weekend. So it was a very crammed, uh, very crammed scene around San Francisco for the last week leading up to the Super Bowl. And the fact that they snuck in Ryan Reynolds and TJ Miller to do interviews the day before the Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of cool. That is very cool. Were, was it uh, a jam-packed thing, or was it uh, just for the press that was there and nobody knew that they were there? Were they kind of hidden away, or how did it, how did it play? Yeah, I mean, they took, over, they took over a bar, and they put up the Sister Margaret's uh, sign on, yeah. on some bars. So yeah. people are like, there's a couple of locals that came by like, uh, I come here every day. <laughs> Why is this closed? They're like, yeah, I can't, can't tell you. I can't, can't tell you. <laughs> one, one guy was like, I'm going to yelp about this. <laughs> no, he was so pissed. <laughs> he was so mad he couldn't go in and get his daily dose of booze. And, <laughs> and he's going to give a bad Yelp review. To oh, that's uh, awesome. That's how, that's how dedicated people were to going to this establishment, <laughs> the it, Sister Margaret's. Yeah. For Wayward Girls. Ah, uh, dude. Uh, well, let's yeah. talk about the movie, man. I mean, uh, we uh, Blake and I saw this thing last week, and uh, we loved it. Blake, have you got a mic on? Are you able to talk to us? You can get one. Okay, cool. Well, I want to hear your opinion, Jose. What did you think, my friend? Uh, it's just a, it's what it needed to be. Yeah. It's it's literally everything it needed to be. I mean, Deadpool, the character, is known for you know breaking the fourth wall, talking to the crowd, giving the cues in the comic books. Yeah. And just the fact that the movie took all of that and made it happen in the perfect way that it needed to be. Yeah. I mean. When people are partitioning for like the PG thirteen version of Deadpool, it's like it's not what Deadpool That's is. That's ridiculous. Yeah, and I, and and I mean they they uh, they talked about that in your interview. I mean it would just be ridiculous for them to make a, a dumbed down version of this movie. It would be like the Green Lantern, and the <laughs> fact that even Deadpool, you know, mocks the Green Lantern multiple times. Yeah. Just that, right at the beginning, right at the opening credits, there's like, oh snap, they're already taking shots at the Green Lantern. Those and he are, those are probably the best opening credits in cinema history, I think. Right. right? I think they written, really are. Written by some yeah, I, I, don't don't spoil it, okay? Because nobody's seen it except a, a few no. very lucky I'm, people out there. But I'm going to see it again tonight. Oh, I can't wait to see this movie again. But the opening credits are worth the price of admission, and the I think the irreverence and the sense of fun and the sense of playfulness and danger. Uh, you, you know, not in terms of physical action stuff, because you can kind of know that it's you know they're they're going to come through all of the bit the beats really unscathed. But yeah. the uh, uh, the danger in the poking fun at everything is just ridiculously at, enjoyable to watch. At everything. At everything. But, yeah. And they poke fun at everything. At it, even at itself. It's it, just like it knows. It's like so aware of itself. Yes. Within the within the movie world. Yeah. It's just it's it's everything that I was hoping it would be. From yeah. Deadpool. And Ryan Reynolds, I think, uh, I mean, he he's all over media right now, and he's talking about his participation in this thing. But he talks about uh, he he actually wrote stuff with this. He carried it with him for eleven years. For eleven years? Can you imagine? Like, uh, I have this thing I want to work on. Yeah. This was ten years ago. Yeah. Back when back when EP was like in its tenth season. <laughs> he's just like, yeah, 
I'd love to uh, maybe make a Deadpool movie. And it what took a, 10 years. What a colossal disaster in retrospect that Wolverine uh, Origins movie was, especially for the character. I mean, there were a lot of other issues with the movie. I, I still had some enjoyment with it because I still have fun watching any of these superheroes. It was on a screen. great video game. And it was a great video game. But the they just ruined Deadpool. I cannot believe they sewed his mouth shut and took out all of the the heart of what the character is with that stupid idea. I cannot believe it, man. I mean, if anything, it did give uh, Ryan Reynolds Deadpool. Yeah. They put him on so the they, stage they, for they, it. Yeah. They, could, they could have did anything else. They could have picked someone else and totally well, just I, they haven't missed that. They haven't cast Green Lantern. I guess he'll, he will never go back to it, but they haven't oh, cast got, Green Lantern. And you got to go help. It's kind of... Give me John Stewart Green Lantern. Yeah, totally. But... I, you, you could see that DC, they totally screwed that movie up. It was it was horrendous. But De I think Deadpool is going to be huge. And I think it's going to be probably the biggest movie in Ryan Reynolds' career. And I think it's going to make him, he's already a huge superstar. This is going to make him a megastar. And I think we're going yeah. to see De Deadpool in all of the future X-Men movies. And we're going to... It'll be like it'll be like Stanley cameos. Totally. It'll just pop up. He is the new, you know, honestly. And he can just voice the character forever for as long as he ages, right? And he's just comic relief no matter how he's going to appear from now on. Yeah. Uh, but he... Uh, I mean, he redeems himself as one of these action lead superhero stars. And, you know, DC should have been smarter with the way that they played with them. And I wonder if they're going to have major regrets. Because, you know, I think he was... A pretty good choice for Green Lantern. They just they just screwed up that that uh, design and that whole style the, the full way. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and and the fact that it's Deadpool being Deadpool in a Deadpool movie. Yeah, it's it's just it. And I, I think that they mentioned it. I don't know if it was in the interview that I shot with them, but I know they were talking about it in other ones where it opens the doors for more R-rated Marvel movies. It doesn't oh. have to be over the top crazy. Yeah. I mean, like Watchmen. Hello. Yeah. We don't always need glowing blue penis in movies, but listen, Jessica that... Jessica Jones and Daredevil would be R-rated movies the way that Netflix is, is oh, yeah. putting those things out, you know. So, and, and it's funny too because like that was the sort of the predecessor to like uh, we can be riskier with our characters. Like I wouldn't expect Daredevil to be a rated R kind of style movie or TV show, but yeah. they went and did that, and Jessica Jones, and I'm sure they're going to do the same with Luke Cage and the Defenders. Yep. Oh, and Punisher is definitely an R-rated thing, and they they actually had a pretty successful Thomas Jane version of that. I actually liked that movie; it was okay. But <laughs> you're that echo. You're that echo, man. <laughs> oh, <freaking. laughs> Hello, Thomas Jane. Inside Thomas Jane moment. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, Not everybody I, I, has have, inside I, Thomas Jane I, moment. Have you seen the? Uh, speaking of that, have you seen him in The Expanse? He's yeah. terrific. He's fantastic. Yeah. He's perfect he's for no, that. He's no Elias Duplexis. And Elias oh, Defects is fantastic in The Expanse as well. But you got to watch that show. It's amazing. Um, okay, well, Deadpool, uh, is it is it just the sense of comedy? Is it just Ryan Reynolds that makes this movie work for you? No, I mean, it, it, it's it's funny because it's it's that touching love story yeah. that element. Because it's like, you know, you wouldn't think, I mean, they, they, they poke fun at it like, this Valentine's Day, go see one of the best love stories you'll ever see in yeah. Deadpool. It's got some touching moments in it. It's just like, you know, he, he really cares about, you know, this other character in the movie. And she's smoking hot. Who's also in Gotham, which is another DC crossover yeah, yeah. Marvel kind of thing. Yeah. That's um, uh, uh, Monica Baccarin, right? Yeah, or Morena. Uh, Morena Baccarin. Yeah, she's she's yeah. terrific. Everything that I've seen her in, uh, yeah. she's been phenomenal. You know, she's, she's, having, she's, having a, she's a Firefly baby. vet. You know, she huh. was fantastic in Firefly. I, I love seeing her star rising like this. She was Homeland. great in Homeland, absolutely. Yeah. Wasn't she in Dexter for a while, too? Uh, yes. I think so. I believe, yeah. I believe so. Okay, Maybe. well, she's wonderful. Sure. Uh, and she is, I think, as uh, well-written and as fun to watch on screen as Ryan Reynolds is. Yeah. You know? And even, like, even T.J. Miller's weasel character, he's not in it much, but he's got the support of everyone else around him yeah. and his establishment, you know, so it's going to be interesting to see where that character can take off and go into. Yeah. And it's just the, I mean, just the overall like solid cast. Ajax, meh. yeah, you're bad English guy. He was the transporter. He was the new transporter in the last that yeah. last movie. And which I mean, let's be honest. Be honest. If Ajax was Jason Statham, that would have been huge. They didn't have the money for Jason Statham, and they it, they they uh, have no they compunction. The transporter. Yeah, <laughs> they have no They're compunction like... telling us that they don't have the money for certain things in this movie. I, I don't want to spoil the gags and the jokes, right? I think that's the challenge with this. I think it is. Uh, uh, it is way better than I expected it to. My only concern now is, like, like 
what do you do I, with the character that is more than just comic relief for future movies? You know, because he's. It, I mean, I'm. Th sure. This was a self-contained, wonderful origin story, but now what do you do? Whatever the hell you want. I guess, I'm right? Sure, I'm sure if you've been working on a project for 11 years, you've got plenty of ideas. Yeah. And yeah. you've got so many stored plans like, you know, I wish we had more characters you can cross over with. And well, he's we talking, and Ryan Reynolds that. is talking, he wants to bring the X-Force in, which is, uh, you know, got some elements of time travel, Cyclops' yeah. son. Cable, Cable. There. Yeah, and that could be fun, That totally. Um, Fish. But I don't know, like a standalone Deadpool movie. What do you do? What do you like? Where do you go with that? I don't. I don't. I haven't read the books enough to kind of know some of the story. You kind of you create. You create a supervillain called Nuclear Man who okay. can control the sun with crazy fingernails. Okay, perfect. And yeah. he can take out anything. A little tip of the, the hat. Power of the sun. A little tip of the hat to Superman Four. <laughs> yeah. Quest, Quest for Peace. Quest yeah. For peace. Woo. We should review the shittiest superhero movies on the show. That'd be amazing. Start uh, with Batman. Okay, so, A. Oh, Batman 3, Let's yeah. Let's talk about movies. Yeah, that was terrible. The uh, the movie where I leaned over to Scott and said, is Batman going to show up in this Batman movie? <laughs> yeah. Terrible. Uh, okay, so what are you going to give Deadpool then? What's your score? I'm giving an eight and a half. Eight and a half? Yeah. I, I was there, but I'm actually, in retrospect and thinking about it more, I was kind of an eight and a half, and it's mostly because I don't have that uh, emotional connection to the thing. The I've Ryan never Reynolds read it. and TJ, like I, you didn't play pool with them? I didn't play with them, but I love those guys. And I, I, But the more I think about it, I don't think they could have made a better Deadpool movie. There's really not anything that I have an issue with, you know? Like, they, they were so upfront about uh, what they wanted to do and where their heart was with the thing. And... Uh, my expectations weren't that high. I was kind of nervous. You know, I thought, oh, my God, is this thing going to suck balls? But it actually uh, it was really fun. Oh, it sucks balls. <laughs> well, in the bad way. I, but in the good yeah. way, it sucks balls. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a nine. Blake, what are nice. you going to give it? Uh, I would probably give it a... Uh, Seven. Okay. Shut up, Blake. Sorry, I just can't get my mic <laughs> Okay. Um, Did you, you say anything me? lower than... Check, check, check. Yeah, check, we can check. hear you. Cut you. Check. Yeah. Yeah, I would probably give it like a... Eight and a half, nine out of ten. Yeah, yeah. So that's that, that's pretty high praise. I, I mean, and and we're not. Are you a huge Deadpool fan? Have you read the books? Were you a collector of that stuff at all? I, I have like the, the the early Deadpool stuff, like when he was a when he was a bad guy. Okay. And he came in in New Mutants, and I was like, I I like the look of this character. I was big in all that those that era of comics. So yeah. When I first like jump in, dove in, all these new characters were coming out. Yeah. Uh, I haven't. I don't know what the hell he's been up to in the last since Ryan Reynolds started thinking about it 11 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, I can, I, can, I can only imagine it getting better. Yeah. Like, with Gar like a movie like Guardians of the Galaxy, you see that, and you're like, dude, that was such a good origin story. They can clearly tell more stories with those characters. Totally. I don't expect it to be as good as that first one, which was a surprise, but I think the second Deadpool movie is going to be like, there's no way, it's just, it was such a good, you know, like you said, a nice contained story. Yeah. How are they going to top it? And I think they will, and it's just going to be like... I don't know how they will. That's my that, that is That's my concern. That's what's so cool about it. Yeah. That's what's so good about yeah. it. It's like I, I don't know what the hell they can do, but you know he's thought of it and they held things out because they wanted to make another one, hopefully. Let's predict its box office this weekend. It's an R-rated superhero movie. Ah. What do you what do you let's see. I mean, it's tough because you know Zoolander 2 also comes out. Yeah. Did you see that yet? I saw it, yeah. Yeah, what do you think of that? We, it was Blake, all right. Blake and I saw that last night too. It was, yeah, it was all right. It, I heard. It was, it was all right. I, I heard. Uh, actually, I don't know if we're allowed to. I guess we are. People are talking yeah, about true. this on the internet. Yeah, just uh, the um, I the the fan noise is really loud. It's coming in from. Uh, oh, from my. That's yes. my headset. Yeah. Sorry, or my yeah. microphone. Yeah. Um, the um, yeah, I wouldn't turn your microphone up that high, man. It's okay. very, It's very loud. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, my expectations were very low for Zoolander because I've been hearing all this negative buzz, and uh, but. Uh, I was actually entertained. I mean, I think yeah. one of my favorite it was, it things. Was a it was a fun movie. That's what I said when I when they were asked, "What did you think?" I was like, "It was fun." Yeah. It wasn't as over the top like Hangover Two. I can't believe they went crazy and did all this funny stuff. Yeah. And it starts off with people were applauding that opening scene. Yeah. Like, yeah. With Justin. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was like, just like okay. Yeah, and it, was, I, it was a fun watch. The gags are uh, definitely callbacks to the first movie, you know, because it's. But I, I, the the first movie was not a, and I guess this kind of goes into my fears with Deadpool, right? Like the, it's not a super super uh, deep concept, the the Zoolander concept, and I I I think only you're, because are of you my, trying to say it's shallow? 
it's shallow. It is, right? Like the, the laughs are kind of as surface as they're painting them all out to be. And it's a kind of commentary on how ridiculous our obsession with beauty is. And all of that stuff is funny. Uh, and, and it's hilarious to laugh at all of our, you know, our, our uh, selfie kind of lifestyle that we're all leading right now. But uh, I, I mean, I, I think they, they hit the those same notes again. Picture. Yeah, they did you did. see that twenty-eight foot selfie stick at the premiere? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's did like, they do what? that really? They did. Yeah, oh, they that's brought, it's like a Guinness World Record for the biggest yeah. selfie stick picture. You see, that's a good state. It's a good statement, and it's funny, and it's uh, it's definitely appropriate. But that's kind of it, you know. It's really just that's what the message is: is that people are more beautiful on the inside, kind of, you know, through this elaborate kind of uh, silliness. Yeah. Uh, but it was still entertaining, and the and the gags were coming in pretty <clears throat> pretty fast and furious. And I think that uh, uh, Owen Wilson and Ben Stiller recognized that they're um, way older, and they kind of kept punching that up throughout the movie. And I actually appreciated that they kept referring to themselves as has as an older male model, <laughs> as an older male model myself. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I actually uh, I was entertained, and I was expecting it to just be terrible and just a kind of punishing in the same way that Anchorman Two was. Remember how disappointing Anchorman Two? That yeah. was that was bad. I mean, I never want to see that movie again. But I think I could probably watch Zoolander two again and, and still chuckle. You know, I had some I had some genuine laughs. I'm sure it's it's gonna be one of those movies where the deleted scenes also are like, oh, these guys they yeah. clearly are having fun coming back into these roles yeah. so many moons later. I think the, the the other challenge too is that Ben Stiller's got an overexposure problem. He's just been in so much stuff, and we've just hey, see- can't be overexposed when you're so good looking. <laughs> No, but he's done. He's done so many things, and I think that the the world has kind of turned on on uh, his brand and his comedy. Uh, Will Ferrell's outrageous in this movie. I think he does a really good job. I actually think that it's one of his funniest performances. Jacob Moodberg. Yeah, I mean he's he is like he is totally going for it in this film. You know, he did last time too, but. I don't think he lost a step in a, it's been many years since they made the last one. That's what that's just what he does. Like Ron Burgundy, it took so many years to get a sequel for that. And he just brought that brought that character back again. Yeah. I wish they would have just had him like when he was Jack and fresh out of prison with yeah. his like piano key necktie tattoo. I thought that which was they hilarious. Show in the trailer. It's like they should have just let him rock that body for a little bit and then take <laughs> off. Yeah, for like ten seconds. It's like all those special effects for this fake body thing for like a two second walkout. Yeah. And then he just shreds it. Oh. Yeah. Can I make an observation? Yes, of course. Um, you yeah. sound great. I don't know. How do people hear you? Yeah, I think it, I'm hearing an echo, but I think it's just like I'm hearing myself. Like Thomas Jane. Life. Yeah, no, you sound fantastic. Uh, just the, the yeah, outfit. I, I kind of want to make out with you, Blake. You sound so good. Oh, thanks. Okay. Um, Ooh, the the outfit that Mugatu yeah. is wearing right when he gets out of prison, the blue out, sort of coverall outfit with the weird um, diamond-shaped colorful pattern on it. Yeah. That's a reference to Star Trek. Oh, okay, cool. Because Mugatu is... Uh, Nerd! <laughs> Mugatu, <laughs> Mugatu the, the name Mugatu is from the, old, is from the old Star Trek show. Yeah. And uh, it is. Yeah. From the uh, si- mo- the 60s Star Trek show. There's a monster called the Mugatu. Oh, okay. But um, right on. This yeah. has been your Star but, Trek moment, brought yeah, to you by so, Blake Seifkin. So the outfit that he's wearing looks the the, pa- the colorful star pattern on it looks just like the officer's dress uniform so in the awesome. Star Trek show. Made the force be just so everyone wants. <laughs> just for everyone who wants to know. Get the one ring and may the force be with you. Okay. Um, uh, what else have you been up to, my friend? I know that we're uh, this hiatus is killing all of us, and uh, we would like to be working more often with you and everyone. Uh, but what else have you been doing? Because I know, like, you must be getting a lot of people asking you how you're doing and what you're up to, uh, and we miss you. We miss working with you on a regular basis. But what have you been doing? Just been playing a lot of games. I've been streaming a lot more on the old Twitch. Yeah. Uh, we just finished the uh, we just finished what unravel did ran through the witness nice did about 20 hours of the witness with frustration with some some fellow people that tag along and I was it got to a point where I'd stream like four or five hours a day of yeah. the witness and I was can anyone else solve this <laughs> I can't look at these puzzles anymore I can't look at them which way do I go I have to be honest I have the witness it's queued up but we, you know I got X Men or XCOM and uh, Fire Emblem and Unravel and Firewatch and uh, the yeah. Mario and Luigi Paper Jam. It, it's like all of these big games have hit all at once, and I just have not been able to turn my attention to The Witness. And it's partly because everybody says it's impossible and uh, brutal. 
It's definitely. I mean, I have my uh, sheet of paper that I'm like writing things on and patterns on. My no way. Graph paper. Oh yeah. That's amazing. I'm going to graph paper. That's yeah. how legit this game is getting. People are like, just look up, watch other people play. I'm like, no, that's not why I'm doing it. I want to genuinely be frustrated. Yeah. And crying yes. on camera. Yes. And people are like, yeah, no, it's just. So that was a, uh, that was uh, that was fun. That was fun to go through and plow through and then unravel. It, finish that in about six hours, which was good. I mean, for the condensed game that it was. Yeah. Um, how many just, how many chapters is it? I haven't beat it yet. I'm, I'm only a few chapters in. How many? I think there's about nine or ten. Okay. I say. Okay. Cool. I think we're talking with uh, uh, Martin from Coldwood next week, actually, and we're going to be chatting with him. I want to get a little bit further in the game before I talk with him. But uh, it's been a pretty amazing January, February, right? There's been some pretty big, it's, big titles it feels, already. It feels like a couple years ago, you yeah. know, when you get that solid beginning of the year. A lot yeah. of games that will get forgotten by yep. the end of the year. I just downloaded uh, Dying Light, the following, and oh, yeah. uh, I revisited the. Um, it was it sucked because I couldn't move my PlayStation Four save from Dying Light into the following collection, the collection edition. Uh, um, so I, I can't carry on in my campaign in the Dying Light uh, mode, which kind of blows. But it was fun to just kind of revisit the opening again, and I I just touched, just scratched the surface on the. Uh, on the following, um, and I'm looking forward to diving into that. I'll probably stream some of that as well. I just hope I just hope Kevin Bacon shows up. Yeah, there you go. That's really what I want. No, I think he's dis- then- he's he's distancing himself from <laughs> from following. that part of it. Yeah, that's over. That's a, <laughs> yeah. that's a chapter yeah. closed. And you've been traveling too. Where have you been in the world to say uh, already in 2016? Uh, I went to London. Yeah. That was amazing. I haven't been to London since I was like six. That's awesome. So, so it was cool to explore that, eat some uh, fish sticks and chips. We missed you because we were, we were in San Francisco and we would have all been hanging out together for sure um, when we went to cover Far Cry Primal and we went to the Square event yeah. and a Nintendo event and a Street Fighter event. They, they decided to have like fun. nine events the week I was gone. Yeah. It was like two days. They did like all the events. It was great. It was a great trip, but we you know, we would totally missed you and we, we would have uh, hung out for sure. Where did you go on that trip? Were you at Disneyland uh, then or something? No, I just went. I just went to London. Got to tour Wembley Stadium. Nice. Which was awesome. Yep. Uh, went to Manchester. Nice. Spent some time in Manchester. Nice. Got to t- got to got to talk in an English accent, which was rather quite extraordinary. Did you talk uh, in an English accent? Oh yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of course. I, I had to do it. it. Makes you sound more distinguished. And, and did, nobody, did anybody? Nobody made fun of me. Nobody did. Okay. Nobody yeah. called you out on it. Okay. I mean, and it's like stupid American with a stupid accent. Well, which, uh, is this a territory-specific English accent that you can do now, or is this uh, it's just your, no, whatever you hear in your head? It's my standard. Okay. It's like when I went to New Zealand, and it's I was trying to do a Harry Poppins accent, English like, accent, yeah. is it? It's not Harry Potter. <laughs> it's Harry Potter. You want to talk like Harry Potter? <laughs> oh, my God, and nobody made fun of you. They just... I didn't talk like that. They right. probably would have made fun of me. I was like, <laughs> expecto patronum. <laughs> He's like, what? <laughs> you would have been punched in the face. Probably. I'm with, a giant. With a so. big piece of cod. Poof. Just, I get one of these bad boys. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Um, that's, that's pretty much it for my traveling. The Super Bowl was here. Didn't go to that because that shit is expensive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Didn't want to do that. Yeah. Uh, but that, that, was, that was an exciting time. How crazy, was, how crazy was it in the city? It was, uh, it was bananas. Was it a shit show or what? I mean, was they, it impossible I mean, they, to get this, downtown? This, it wasn't really imp- – I mean, because I think the, the the fact that Super Bowl City was in town scared a lot of people away uh, from, okay. like, making it crazy to get in and out of the city. Right. P- public transit was a breeze, though, so okay. it was all about that stuff. Okay. Then, uh, but it was, just, it was just fun to explore and see, like, oh, this, the city already wants the Super Bowl back in five years. Really? Yeah. Wow. They're already petitioning to get that. I'm like, five years? All right. Super Bowl 55. That'd be great. That's amazing. Did you go to the Madden Bowl or anything like that? They had a they had a. Uh, yeah. 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 How was Check that? Check that out. Uh, well, I didn't get there until the, the end because I was watching Deadpool. Yeah. Which was great. They were like, yeah, yeah, you know, I was, why are you late? That Deadpool. You know, I had to. Nice. Had to go see that. Nice. Uh, no, it was fun. It was. Ex- I mean, it's always cool to like see the NFL players out of their element, not playing football, but yeah. playing football still. Yes, yes, weird. yes. And then Ludacris showed up. What Fallout Boy? Really? That was good times, yeah. Nice. Those guys performed. Really? Yeah. It's a big old party. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was quite festive. Very DJ nice. DJ Khaled. DJ Khaled was there, saying his name over and over again because yeah. that's what he does. He the best. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but other than that, man, just uh, getting some games downloaded on my Steam machine. Yeah. I don't, 
on my PC. You're a full on PC gamer right now. So I've what been missing out? What have what are you queuing up then? What's next for you gaming wise and and uh, what can we uh, connect with you on to talk about in the in the in the very near future? Um well I did get also I just got Firewatch in XCOM 2. Yeah. Did you beat Firewatch? Um, no, I haven't haven't started it yet. Okay. I did I, last week it was just The Witness and then I finished up Unravel this week. Yeah. Um, I got Rise of the Tomb Raider, which I finished on my Xbox, but yep. I want to play it on my on your sexy machine, on the sexy box. Yeah, I had a, I had a uh, YouTube comment on the uh, uh, on the Rise of the Tomb Raider PC interview that I did that they have some weird DRM in the game that is I don't know if this is true, um, and you tell me because you're you've probably got a faster graphics card than I do right now, but uh, they said that the specs top out less than what they could be if it didn't have this DRM in it. But I, I don't know. But I don't know. Try to I run would, it at try to run it at I, your uh, at the top at ultra high can. settings. Yeah, and see what it looks like. And uh, we should reconvene and talk about that. But you know what I want to talk about right now is uh, is uh, you and your earliest sort of days with uh, with EP. Tell tell me how you got involved with this show. Oh man, uh, it's gonna it's gonna go all the way back 14 years now. Yep. Uh, when G4 had first started, that's a lot of people ask like, how'd you get involved? And I was like, yeah. uh, my buddy came home from school one day and he was like, man, there's a channel that just has video game stuff. And I was <laughs> like, what? That's a thing? <laughs> channel 136, put it on, man. And then it was uh, the first show I saw was actually uh, you and Tommy on Judgment Day reviewing something. And I'm like, these guys, like reviewing games on TV is a thing. I couldn't believe it. That's my awesome. mind, was, my mind is blown. And my, we were my my household. We were late in the PC getting. Yeah. Um, so we finally got a computer. I joined GeForce forums, and uh, and then I just started keeping a, a a list of every game you guys reviewed, with every pro and con. I was like, Shh, I'm gonna get these guys' attention because this is gonna be amazing and something's gonna happen. <laughs> and luckily enough, you guys happened to post on the forums a lot. Yep. Tommy, Tommy especially. Yep. Uh, yeah, man. And then just sent you a message saying, I'd, I'd love to come out and work with you. And we go, we go to this event in San Jose called the Game Developers Conference. You want to show up? Yeah, I want to <laughs> do that. And I remember the first game I saw at GDC was Stalker. Oh yeah. At PC. And I saw it was like that was the most realistic hand. Like first it was just this guy holding a gun. <laughs> and I've never seen a hand more realistic yes. in a video game. And I was like, this is the future. I don't know how games are gonna look any better than this. <laughs> that looks like a real hand. <laughs> I'm gonna download this game. I don't have a computer. There are always long. those games that are that have those those uh, touch points, those memories that you have. When I first saw uh, the vein and this guy's aren't like this part. When it's I like the... when I saw the first demo for Half Life Two and I walked through the light playing the game i could feel it on my body i could feel that light and i was like holy shit lighting is incredible in video games now how can it look better than this there are always those how can it look better than this moments and for for, for me a lot of those games are like genesis golf games yeah. i don't know what it is but yeah. i'm just like Psh. look at it. like that guy looks real there's no there's no way they can, i mean what are they gonna do are they gonna change his shirt i don't know <laughs> Yeah, I asked. Oh, sorry, uh, Arnold Palmer Golf. I, <laughs> I once, no way you can top this. I once asked the Sucker Punch guys, like, why do you even need PlayStation Three hardware? How can you make a cartoon look more cartoony than your your awesome games right now? How do you? How can you even do that? You know, why, Sly Cooper looks like an animated show. How can you make that better? And then they. But they do. They, and do, they do, and they told me it's yes, like, and they can look even more cartoony, and it's crazy. So we started working with you at that GDC. Yeah, back in two th back in the aught three. Yep. Uh, and then it went to that, and you're like, yeah, well, you seem cool enough. You want to go to E3? Like, oh. From from my side, what I saw on the forums and all of us that were working on EP back then was this guy that was just a, a fountain of positive energy and support. And uh, most you know most of our viewers were really enthusiastic, and and uh, people that were posting on the on the forums were fantastic. But uh, you stood out because you were there. Uh, you know, in force, but your messages not only about the show and about what we were doing, but also to the other people on the forums were just, it was just wonderful. And, you, you know, it captured your spirit in the, in the, in the messages that you were throwing out there and the phrasing that you had and the positivity. And uh, we just thought you were wonderful. And, and uh, when we found out that you were in the Bay Area, uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was definitely a, a treat to be able to pull you out and, and uh, you know, you were, 
it was an inauspicious beginning because you were really just looking after our gear and stuff as we were shooting, but uh, I think pictures, one of the cool... There's some pictures of me at E3 on my PSP, <laughs> surrounded by gear. <laughs> just... and, and you're such a big, huge dude, too. You could carry every goddamn thing we used to have. And we used to travel with so much junk. Oh, yeah. It used to be every... <laughs> Everything that makes with me in my parent in my mom's house <laughs> in my tiny room. Yeah, it was just my bed and then like two cameras, lighting gear, <laughs> uh, gaffer tape. Oh, dude, I'm green sorry, man. Screens and all this other stuff. Like, um, <laughs> that's how I learned. People are like, because when I travel now, I always just bring a backpack. People are like, well, how do you fit? I'm like, trust me, <laughs> I've mastered packing everything I own into a backpack. <laughs> Oh yeah, we had tripods and the whole goddamn thing, and that—I mean—that was in the era of uh, Betacam SP when we had these huge cameras and tapes that weighed a ton. And yeah, you were God's end, man. You were helping us out immensely back then. And then, uh, how did you get in front of the camera? What happened? Uh, well, my From first, your perspective, uh, my first on cam, yeah. getting to do—I was uh, Fubaka. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, for like the the GameCube Star Wars game. Yes. That had came out. And I just got to go. <laughs> that was it. That was it. I was like, yes, this is great. I'm, we, so, I'm such a natural. I'm an actor. We tried to emulate, and it, it didn't turn out that well, but we tried <laughs> to emulate the cantina scene, and I was interviewing, I think, Clint Young or something like that on uh, at LucasArts about a game, and uh, I was supposed to be the Han Solo in the thing, and uh, you were supposed to be my Chewbacca, my it's Fubaka. I got to be Han. I was trying to get Han Solo's mem uh, you know his uh, I was trying to do the impression of Han Solo I mean I watched the thing a few times but didn't really nail it but it was fun and your Fubaka was fantastic yeah I mean I thought I pretty much nailed it you nailed I it was, I was the highlight of absolutely that you saved skit. that segment yep uh, yeah and then uh, and then you guys went and reviewed it was right when the WWE changed their name yeah and you guys reviewed the Raw game versus SmackDown game, and you went on camera and said, Today on the show, Tommy and I are taking a look at WW Raw versus WW SmackDown. And I was like, What? <laughs> There's no E in the logo. There's no Ahu in the Yahoo because, logo, which is because, a lie. You know what it's called. Because it was called, because we're not wrestling fans, neither Tommy or I, but it was. They, they used to be WWF, and then the World Wildlife Federation said, Uh uh. Oh, oh, you can't have any of that, and they took that right out, and then uh, their logo just changed to WW, and that totally screwed us up, man. So clearly, yeah. Well, so, so I told you guys you could never do any more <laughs> WWE stuff, and then you were like, "Well, there's this event in LA for the WWE. You want to go?" Which was WrestleMania 21. Yeah. And I was like, "Fuck yes, I want to go to <laughs> WrestleMania and talk to wrestling superstars." <laughs> yes, please. And then, of course. The first person I interview, <laughs> Stacy Keebler, who is smoking hot, yes. who I just happened to have Almost a missed... smoking hot picture of on my PSP. You're oh. like, you should show her. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> sounds like something Vic wants me to do. I'm going to do it. Please the boss. And I was like, hey, Stacy Keebler, had you had a chance to check out the PSP? She's like, no. I'm like, it's great. It plays games. You can listen to music. And it also has pictures. And See, she's like, well, that's weird. I, well, it was weird because you were wearing a suit, first of all. And you were I was this, classing it up. You were classing it up. But you were. Uh, this was your first time in front of the camera. And, and shame on me as the producer to not sort of ease you into this. These were the yeah, your heroes. Stacey smoking hot Keebler. Your, your heroes going, going and Stacey Keebler. And you're wearing your, your uh, suit. But, the, you know, what I knew of of you as FUBAR is this I mean this is the guy I know right here right now and the, the the person that the viewers have all gotten to know is this very relaxed funny uh you know irreverent guy or kind of our Deadpool uh that can kind of flow with whatever the, the hell happens had you met Stacy Keebler like you are now and shown her the PSP that just happened to have a, a desktop of her and her <laughs> her thong bikini like, <laughs> sticking her butt out I think it would have been hilarious but uh, yes it, t it did turn into an incredibly uncomfortable moment between you and Stacy Keebler where she looked at you and just said you're a sad she's like wow you remind me of man. George Clooney I'm gonna go date him <laughs> and then she did that I was her stepping stone to jo to GC but you got lots of other interviews that day that that night yeah and you was, and that was fun you got and you uh I think you calmed down a little bit had a little bit more fun a little bit more fun a little bit more relaxed Tell me about uh, sort of progressing along your your on-camera career as a reporter for EP. 
Well, I think it's, um, you know, a lot of people, they ask me now, like, do you get nervous? Yeah. And it's like, I don't, I don't really, I mean, at first I used to, you know, it's like, especially if it's meeting somebody that I'm, ex, you know, excited to meet. Like, The Rock, I think, is the only person I've never interviewed. Yeah. That I would, I'd like, oh, my God, I'd love to interview The Rock. That would be amazing. Yeah. You do so many movies, Rock. Come yeah. through San Francisco. Maybe we could talk. Yeah. But uh, now it's just like, I just got to understand that these people get it all the time. You know, like, a lot of these people, especially the celebrities. I mean, game developers and producers and stuff. It's like, I go in just wanting to find out about the game. Yeah. They always they always ask, are you going to ask any questions? Like, I know what questions you're not going to be able to answer, so I'm not going to waste your time by answering, asking them. Yeah. When I know you're just going to say it's going to come out in the future, or we're going to be talking about that at a later time. Yeah. It's just, you know, I mean, you, you do it for so long, you just, you, you understand what people want to hear, how they want to be approached, how they don't want to be, like, freaked out by, oh, my God, super fan. And they're just people in yeah. the end. So celebrities, producers, they're all the same. Sometimes they're nervous, especially in the game developer world. There's a lot of people that are like, I've never done on camera stuff. Yeah. I'm like, just just talk to me. Yeah, that's one of the just things I'm proudest of with EP is that we've been that uh, platform, that first-time platform for hundreds of game makers. And I, I, uh, I am really, really grateful that we've had that opportunity, but I'm also incredibly proud that we've – risen to the challenge to put a lot of these people that deserve that attention on television and and through our you know our video stuff out there and it's fun actually when we look back at the old days to uh to see that because a lot of those people were very nervous but they were also very trusting you know and they they played along with us and did all kinds of crazy things what was the, what was the craziest thing that you think you did with ep because some, oh, some of your first shoots were that, you know, we were weekly then, so we had a lot more time to kind of labor over the pieces and stuff. But you came out on some pretty effects-driven things. You were a huge yeah. part behind the scenes, but also you had stuff to do in front of the scenes, too. I, I mean, I think the coolest thing that I've – like the, the Keeley Battlefront interview. Yeah. With, like, all the effects that Tav put in and all the rest of the guys. Uh, it's just, like, you see it. Like, when you're shooting it, you're like, oh, we're just going to have some guys from the 501st fighting with lightsaber. Those guys were amazing, too, right? They were just right? so into it. It's like, it yeah, was let's incredible. do it. Let's do it. But yeah. you're watching them, and you're just like, what the hell are we going to do with this? It's just going to be like, guys. <laughs> and then it's like, it turns into, like, you know, speeder bikes zipping by and ATSD. <laughs> oh, my God. You, like, ah! <laughs> you do you know, a pretty, so you do a pretty mean Keely. You want to give us a taste right now? Uh, that was it. That was like, EBA, Jeff Keighley signing off for EB. Ah! And then he gets crushed. Yeah, hey, you got to throw in the word exclusive in there, though. Uh, the world exclusives. Yeah, you got to say that. WEs. Yeah, you got to say that. We have the world exclusive gameplay premiere trailer <laughs> of the Electric Playground. <laughs> Yeah, that that is that is actually I told when I when Jeff was on the other day I told him that that's one of my favorite memories too was the uh, both of those Battlefront pieces were just so much fun because it took so much effort you know and even on the on the like you were out there and you, I think you brought your friend Aaron out there to help us yeah. and and John and we had two John Hessler who was a camera operator that we work with a ton in San Francisco and I think he brought another camera operator and a sound guy and we had two cameras rolling and we shot it on my birthday and we shot it on your birthday on on uh, four twenty. Yeah, right. That's it. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was a lot of a lot of coordination. All the 501st guys, the Golden Gate Garrison, who were all incredible. They donated their time, and they uh, they were just wonderful to work with. All of that, and then br brought it back, and all of the editing that has to happen over a long period of time, and the effects that have to happen in almost every shot, and then all the audio and foley, and you know, I had every member of the team, uh, you know, pretty much voicing stormtroopers or screaming when people were getting shot and blasted and it ends up being this this giant collage of uh of uh contributions you know of of people kind of believing in it and, and, and those turned out really great and but we did yeah. other things too like you were with me and us on the uh, jade raymond's clone trooper oh, yeah on our first day, like, hey, yeah. first day on the job. Yeah. You want to be like, our, and, every, and every, everybody was taking pictures. I'm like, I think it's because they think you're Natalie Portman. Yeah, they, totally. They, yeah. they might think that this is you. You're walking around San Francisco with Stormtroopers and Matt <laughs> Shell. I think you. I was like, uh, yeah, here's a picture of us on a cable car. That was a was fun a shoot, too. That was crazy. And, uh, you know, I always credit uh, Jade. I have to have her on the show talking about all this stuff, too. But she was just like, okay. Let's yeah. let let's do it. I, 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 that's that's pretty much how it is with EP. Like, yeah. This is what you're gonna do. Yeah. You're gonna be uh, talking about Star Wars, <laughs> walking around the city with Stormtroopers. Cool. Yeah. Okay. What am I supposed to say? No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here's Stacey Keebler. Show a picture of her in her underwear <laughs> on your PSP. 
<laughs> go. First thing on the dot. Like, all right. Okay. She probably uh, still talks about that moment, actually. She probably brings <laughs> that up all the time. We had, um, I think it was Scott Barrett, actually, who worked with us in uh, season one and two. He had a, a, a London trip where he met Tommy and they shot some stuff in London. And then he went up to visit Core by himself because Tommy had to, had to go back to California. And uh, he uh, just showed up at Core with his camera and just sort of busted in and just walked around with the camera and did a bunch of interviews. They knew he was coming, but it was very loose back then. And I remember uh, Core did a, a magazine interview and they referenced that this crazy guy from Canada <laughs> showed up with his camera and just started rolling all over our, our uh, office and shot all kinds of stuff. Of course, that all ended up on the show. Yeah, we, we, uh, we had to do a lot of making it up as we went along in those days too, right? Yeah. What was it like to transition to, uh, to daily for you? Because we went from uh, sporadic, you know, like, we'll get you here, we'll get you there, maybe you'll come on the road with us, come to E3, help us out. Then you started to do some on-camera reporting a little bit, but then we went daily. What was that like in your mind? Because you became kind of a full-timer for us at that point. Yeah, it was bananas. Yeah. I mean, you're just like, I have no idea how we're going to fit, especially with EP daily, and then reviews went daily. Yeah. And it was like, so you want to do, like, how many people we got? Like, five, 600 people? Like, <laughs> and it was like 35, 40 of them. <laughs> yeah. If you guys want to do two daily, two different daily TV shows <laughs> together, what the hell are we going to do? <laughs> like, we're just going to shoot everything imaginable. And it was just like, it got to the point where it was just like, hey, Vic, got this interview coming up. Should we take Yep. Hey, Vic, got this interview. Yep. I'm not even going to ask. I'm just going to go. Like, here's all the stories. Send it up there. And, I mean, it's, it's, it's so funny, when you, especially when you look at, like, how things are now. Yeah. It's just people are like, oh, yeah, like everybody is everywhere. And there's events like like you said, you came down and there was like nine things in like yeah. two days. It's yeah. like, well, sh what, do you, what do you do in a time like that? Yeah. And it got it got a hectic at times. I mean, there's always those times where you're like, um, how, I got to get here and then here. Yeah. And then we got to do three interviews here and I got to play this game to review. And then I got to play <laughs> the other three games to review because we got to shoot reviews in like two days. I'm going to sleep sometime. It's just that the lack of sleep is great. I've learned to power through like Tommy style. Yeah. You get like 20 seconds of sleep a day. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, even like way back in the day, like watching the, you and him and just like, how the hell do you guys like manage to do this? Like you're traveling here, you're going here, you're shooting things like it was it's just an amazing process to see from behind the scenes and then getting to do it. Uh, we were traveling with consoles, man. Back then we were I was taking them to the hotel rooms. We had uh, we had one of those portable monitor type things. I was all I bought a TV sometimes and and uh, oh, yeah. kept I it. Have one of I think TVs I gave you one a TV, yeah. right? Yeah, I bought one in because we had to play a game and, and the, the stupid TVs in the, in the hotel rooms. The very yeah, expensive yeah. hotel rooms we could afford didn't didn't have uh, video inputs, so I had to buy a TV so I could play some shit and then review it. And uh, yeah, that, that happened all the time. We were always just kind of trying to configure how we built the weird job parameters around this crazy existence of making this type of content, you know. But uh, yeah. playing the stuff yeah. is incredibly important, and and really diving in and knowing what you're talking about is incredibly important and we never shortchanged that but it did yeah. it did uh it did create crazy weeks for all of us whether they were the toronto team or the san francisco team or the la team or the well, vancouver teams it was it was when we all started becoming like kind of adults like you know you yeah. had a kid and then i was shooting with ben and then ben had a kid and then everybody's becoming like parents yeah on top of having to play all this stuff you're yeah. like how do you guys even do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? I'm just by myself, hanging out in my room, playing my games. Like, um, yeah. No children. Not yet. yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm like, I, yeah. Yeah, I you just... got you got to play late, man. I, that's uh, like when Ruby goes to bed is when I, I boot up a, a system, you know, more nights. Uh, you know, that's why I have all these late night streams all the time. It's uh, you do you, you sort of space it in where you can. But, and I, it, you know, it was tough to lose reviews last year because I, I love this opportunity of having two, uh, you know, platforms, two different shows that offered uh, uh, definitely some overlap, but definitely some value in different ways happening at the same time. Yeah. And it was difficult to go forward last year with only the budget to make EP, and then we kind of loop reviews back into EP. Uh, but it was also it brought some sanity, I think, into all of our lives a little bit too, because the the trying to manage all of that stuff was pretty nuts. And honestly, in 2013, there just 
No, in uh, 2014. That's when, the, that's when all the gray hairs started yeah. happening. Well, 2014, we uh, we start our budgets were starting to get affected, so we started to lose some people. But also, there were there were n hardly any great games that year. It was a really really tough year to be uh, oh, on television. Oh, tell me about it. On that's TV. when the crappeteers became yeah. the crappeteers. Yeah, <laughs> you guys really had to jump up and cover the worst <laughs> junk out there. But it was. You know, when I when I did a really kind of hard look at at the uh, the the practicality of what we were putting on television, there we and we were doing it, and I think we made a fun show no matter what kind of uh, content we were talking about every day. But I think we talked about a lot of content that probably wasn't deserving of a uh, mainstream thirty minute show out there. Hey, sometimes it has to be done. But it has to be done, and and honestly, that we just reflect and we just talk about the products that are available to us. You know, we don't make those things, so we just we just are a reflection of whatever is being given to us. But I think so many important lessons have been have been, you know, what happened then is a lot of the the AAA developers freaked out about the console space and the expense of it and and the worries that people were moving to mobile and, and abandoning the consoles. So they were very late to to commit big sums of budgets to make AAA games. And so a lot of stuff shifted over to mobile, but the mobile stuff was really unsophisticated then. And, and the, uh, the, the, the free to play stuff was so egregious and so, uh, and it still has a long way to go, but it was, you know, so much kind of shift to mobile ended up, and we covered all of those titles, uh, but they weren't, they weren't great, you know? There were some, yeah. there, there were some standout ones and then the console stuff became sort of really bottom of the barrel, you know, garbage that were just they were just trying to shovel it out. Thank you, crap tears. And then uh, there were, you know, a few and far between some really cool AAA stuff that came out in 2014, but not enough. And that was a very hard year. But I think things are starting to to reconfigure, and the AAA is getting cooler. You know, and I think we had a great 2015. I think we're going to have an awesome 2016. Um, the developers have come back to these platforms because they are selling and they're making some really strong things. But we're also getting amazing console indie sort of middle ground stuff like Firewatch and Unravel. And, and I, we're going to have a ton more of that stuff throughout the year. And mobile is also maturing. So now we're getting more interesting titles that are actually asking for, for money and they have a value and uh, we're also becoming more adept at, at being discerning. I, I'm still playing that uh, Tomb Raider Go game. Is that right? Oh, yeah. 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 Or Lara Croft Go. Great. Yeah, Lara Croft Go. Yeah, such a fantastic game, you know? So well, it's, coming off of Hitman Go, too, it was, it was a different experience. But yeah, I like Hitman Go. They're expanding on that style. So what I'm saying is that I, I want to find the budget, and I don't have it, but I want to find the budget to bring it all back because I believe that there should be two daily shows around this stuff and more. And... and uh, uh, you know, frankly, I think it's preposterous that this this massive medium doesn't have um, content out there that is really concise and tight and aware of the very busy lives that every consumer out there has and gives them all of this information in a very uh, professional but fun way. And that, I think that's what we achieved. You know, even though it was hard, even though we were kind of making it up and certainly our stuff from... 2013, 2013, 2014 was stronger than our stuff from 2008 to 2010 as we were just starting to figure it out. Uh, I think there's still a lot of room for this stuff and it's mind boggling to me that, that all we're really getting around media right now is, is uh, in this space is, um, and I, I like these longer conversations. I like uh, the longer cuts that we're putting online and all of that stuff, I think there's tremendous value there and uh, what other people are doing is great too. But, you know, I think people are busy and that's what that's what we were doing. We were giving people about 45 minutes of, uh, of deep dive into this incredible universe. It's a big universe. Yeah. There's tons of stuff to be talked about. I know. I'm excited to talk about more. Uh, I just want to shout out to the chat. Yes, that is a Man of Steel poster. It's my Mondo Man of Steel poster. Right on. Which and one? My, the, my, the one on the right and the one on the left is my Rob Schamberger Ultimate Warrior. Oh, okay, of course. Okay. They were asking. Superman Ultimate Warrior. So who did the Mondo uh, Superman? Is that an Alex Ross? 
Uh, no. Who's the artist? But it, it looks like one. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. And they just had a limited edition Man of Steel one, and I was like, I must own that. Did, are, did so, you? Did you enjoy? So there. What would? What? Because you weren't. You weren't re reviewing movies on the show, but were you a fan of uh, Man of Steel? Yes. Yeah. Did you like Zack yes, Snyder's I, look or his, his yes. take on it all? Yeah. Yes. I mean, obviously, people are like, oh, you know, because we went and saw that. I saw it three times, I think, before E3. Yeah. And then we were all discussing it at E3. Yeah. And I was like, yes, I loved everything about it because it's not uh, – it was way better than Superman Returns. Yeah. And that's all I wanted. It. Yeah. And it wasn't a Richard Donner. I, that, you know, quite frankly, that's one, one of my favorite things about it. I love the Krypton stuff. I thought they did a great job, and I thought that both – both uh, sh Blake is just shaking his head right now. Uh, I loved both fathers that Henry Cavill had. Uh, both fathers who were also Robin Hoods. They were great though, and I think I think they did a, a really really good stuff with their performance. Amy Adams is the weakest thing, weakest thing, and I've talked about this before. But Cavill was a good choice. Um, Diane Lane's great in the movie. Lawrence Fishburne is great in the movie. Uh, I think that he isn't Superman until he kills Zod because he has to make the choice. That's my take on it. That's why it wasn't called Superman. It was called yeah. Man of Steel. He was defining who he was. And when he kills yeah. Zod, spoiler exactly. to anybody, that he is saying, I am an Earth-bound citizen now. I'm not from Krypton. I'm not joining my Kryptonians who are trying to... At least somebody gets it. To change this Earth back into Krypton, I am I am the protector of Earth, and I love Earth, and now I am Superman, right? Yeah, that's what and I. Now he will. He's like, now that I'm Superman, what's the first thing I'm gonna do? Fight Batman. <laughs> yes, let's do that. And and you haven't seen the new trailer today that that no. has come out. Okay, well no. it's. I, I just I just uh, I mean like trailers, you know? It's like I get it. And like yeah, it, I stopped watching like all that, the Star I mean, Wars stuff too. I totally get right? it. I haven't been in, though. I've been worried about this movie. As much as I liked Man of Steel, I have not been enjoying the marketing around Batman versus Superman. I've liked shots I just don't of like the Jesse characters. Eisenberg. Pardon me? I just, Jesse Eisenberg looks like the Riddler. Yes. Yes, he's he too... Like he should be the Riddler. He's too scrawny and, and not menacing, right? He's just... Like, what, what's going to be interesting about the movie is whatever happens to him that makes him bald and makes him angry. Yeah. Because that's what Lex Luthor is. He's like the kingpin in the Deadpool series, or in uh, Deadpool, in Daredevil. Yeah. Like, that, and, that is a menacing bad. Like, they should have had him be freaking Lex Luthor. He could play both characters. That's fine. He looks great bald. Totally. You know who Pulls I was thinking up. of is Michael Rosenbaum. He did a fantastic job as, uh, as yeah. Luthor on the show. Um, and uh, who was the bad guy? He still, he still acts all the time. I forget his name, but he was the bad guy in Highlander. Uh, there can be only one Highlander. Yeah. Oh, Clancy Brown. Clancy Brown. He, he was just in Hail Caesar. He was in Hail Caesar, and, yeah. And the Highlander guy was, uh, what's his name? Christopher Lambert, he yeah. He was also in Hail yeah, Caesar. Yeah, I know, that was great. Hail Caesar's really cool. Everybody should go see that as well. That's a really good Coen, Coen Brothers movie. Christopher Lambert looked freaky, though. He's aged. Yeah. He's Raiden. Yeah. I am Raiden, god of thunder. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, uh, it's like, let's have a Belgian guy be but Guile. Clancy Brown as Lex Luthor, and I think he has played Lex Luthor in some of the animated stuff. That guy would be imposing and intelligent and articulate and, and intimidating. Kind of and he doesn't have to be brawny and big, but he has to have that, that, uh, that big presence. And I, I don't think that Jesse Eisenberg really has that. He looks so meek and so, like, he, he, uh, you know, he just crawled out from behind his computer to... Uh, Oh, you should not pick a fight with this guy. Yeah, hey guys. Yeah, and he's got he's also got the Joker voice, which is crazy. Yeah, I'm I'm worried about that. I'm also worried that Amy Adams is in the movie, and I love Amy Adams. She's just not my Lois what's, Lane. What's great is that they haven't shown any Aquaman. Yeah, she's like I don't I don't need to see Aquaman. That's fine. You can do a little Wonder Woman cameo. That's good. I know she's in. They have a poster for her now. She's the newest batch of posters. I think she's got way more than a cameo. I think she's she's. Gonna, oh, I know, but I mean, like yeah. they didn't really show her in the first trailer. And well, they she do. Showed up in the trailer. They show the her end, a little bit like, more in this. She's got some dialogue. But my favorite favorite stuff about this is, and why I have hope now is the Batman stuff looks phenomenal. Like they got the suit that moves. And uh, the fighting sequence that they showed in this thing, it's what I've wanted Batman to fight like on screen. And he hasn't been able to do that since the 89, well, he never has because the Adam West guys never fought either. But the, uh, the 89 Batman, every, everybody's in stiff rubber. So the most that they could ever really do is like punch guys from behind them. And I, I liked, um, what was the fighting Batman technique does. that they had in, uh, in Batman Begins? The, what, what do they call that? The 
car. I, I forget the name of the thing, but uh, someone will probably tell me on the, on the. Is it hardcore parkour? No, it's not parkour, parkour, but it's it's this it's this really visceral, violent fighting. It's when um, um, Henry Descartes. fighting method. Pardon me. K C fighting method. The case. What? K E Y S I. Like she's making. K K C fighting method. Okay. It's K C. Okay, whatever that fighting. I loved it. It was very violent and and brutal. But you know they show. Bruce Wayne and Henry Ducard fighting like that before Batman's got his outfit on, and then when he gets his outfit on, it really just evolves into punches, and and uh, it's just not it's not physical, it's not acrobatic enough. And I mean that Bane Batman fight in in uh, Dark Knight Rises is the most embarrassing because they just look like cosplayers outside of Comic Con trying to kick and throw punches at each other. It was, yeah. Get away from me. Yeah, it was not good. But but uh, this one, and it's all, I've only seen the snippet like everybody else, he's flipping and flying and he's diving and he's punching and it's so fast and it's so freaky and fluid. That's how Batman fights. And now we're finally going to be able to see uh, a little well, he physicality. Needs to his fighting game because he's got to fight Superman. Yeah, and then he puts on the outfit and it's, now he's going to have a kryptonite gun. What, that's what I don't understand about the whole movie. There's yeah. the first trailer they show yeah. when Superman rips the doors off of the Batmobile and Batman stands out of it. You're Superman. Take Batmobile, throw it in space, movie's over. Done. That's all he's got to do. Just yeah, throw well, it in space. That's that You're trailer. Superman. You, you throw know, the doors off, throw the whole damn car into space, Batman dies, movie's over. Yeah. Five minutes. He's not. It's he's just not, like the Eagles in Lord of the Rings. Not a eagles. Ki- he's not Take a killer. He's not a killer, Superman. He's not a killer. As, as much as people that would uh, t- remind us that he killed in Man of Steel. He is not a killer. He's gonna he have was to kill for- the same guy. He was forced Again. to that. So he and he now knows the uh, effect of his powers. So he's a really virtuous, amazing person, Superman. But they also always, when they t- tie him to other characters, they tamp down his powers a little bit. So it, it becomes they have to, because he. I mean, the guy can, you know, move. He can Mountains. throw Batmobiles into space. Yeah, he totally he could. Can, he can literally fly around the world and travel back in time. Yeah. And save Lois Lane from well, falling into a ditch. I can't believe it's next month. It's Already. The, it's the, I, it is next month that it comes out. I cannot believe it. And the whole weight of Warner Brothers' future catalog rests on, on the success put, of this thing. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing is everybody makes a big deal about uh, Superman killing Zod in, yeah. uh, in Man of Steel. Yeah. Uh, guess who's back? Show him in the trailer of her. He's still here. Didn't really kill him because apparently he's coming back as Doomsday. Yeah. So it's like, well, here you go. All this hoopla. Superman doesn't kill. He's not dead. He's just chilling on ice with Lex Luthor until they bring him back for the uh, sequel. Not, is that is that lore? Is that from the comic books? I no. No. D- no. Zod doesn't evolve into no because Zod never dies in the books, of course, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's weird. How how is Doomsday formed in the books? I'm more of a Bat reader, and a, like I have more history with Batman than I, I've read lots of Superman. But how did they how did they create Doomsday in the comic books? I don't know. I don't know if they ever just described his creation. Yeah, he just showed up with his green costume on, and then all of a sudden he was pissed off, and then he killed Superman. Okay, because he's the it's champion. Fine, it's fine if he kills Superman. Yeah, yeah, everybody makes a big deal when Superman kills him. It's like you guys are such hypocrites. Hey, let's let's uh, let's talk to the chat here for a second. I'm sure people have a few questions for you. Wow, we got Chat. a lot of. Thank you for joining us, by the way. You guys all rock. Thank you very much. Uh, Blake, any, anything uh, standing out there? Any uh, questions? Well, you guys answered the one about the posters. Okay. Um, I got some the people who just sure. showed up. One of what it. you guys think of Deadpool. Oh, okay. Yeah, we talked about Deadpool earlier in the stream. Uh, freaking love it. And uh, you, you've got to watch Jose's interview with Ryan Reynolds and TJ Miller. He shot it in San Francisco last week. Ryan Reynolds may or may not have given me this mask. It might be the mask from the movie. It's not, but he might. He might. <laughs> Did you hear that he may or may not have uh, leaked the uh, test footage that got this movie made? He uh, did. Did he? Yeah, yeah. he leaked it. He yeah. said it was one of four people, him and the two writers and the director, and he said, I'm 70% sure it wasn't me, but <laughs> for sure it was him, so he leaked it. Pretty gutsy, man. Total Deadpool move to do, right, to leak this I... stuff to get it made. It's a, it's a h- hilarious movie. It's very funny, and the action is fantastic. Um, and it's not just Reynolds that is, uh, we, yeah, we love it. We love it. Uh, we want to uh, put the train through the tunnel <laughs> to uh, Deadpool. No, it's, uh, it's a terrific movie, and you got to go see it. Support it, because uh, they sure as hell didn't need to make it. They forced it on us, and Fox didn't need to invest in it. 
uh, but they did. And uh, I think we got to show them that we want more originality and more fun, more loopy, you know, creations of passion like this movie, especially in the superhero genre. So, yeah, two thumbs up, right? Two thumbs. Two big thumbs. Two and thumbs up and one in the cornhole. Yeah. Just right from that. One, one in the cornhole. All right. Any other questions, Blake? Uh, you guys sort of answered them as you went. Okay, cool. Um, All right. Well, I think uh, I think we're gonna we're gonna call it a day for now, but we'll uh, we'll definitely have you back on to talk about some more stuff soon. Okay. Yeah, man. How does got, that sound? I've got things. I've got things coming up. Yeah. I hear, I hear Hugh Jackman's coming to town. Nice. Just saying. All right. Very nice. Okay. All right. Well, might we'll be hanging out with Wolverine. Go from Deadpool to Wolverine. We'll, just we'll have you on the uh, on the in the basement soon, and we will have you on the show soon. And uh, great stuff, man. It's one of my favorite pieces you've ever done with uh, with those guys. I love the whole style of it. You rock, this brother. Like, this is like what it's being trapped in Vic's basement. Yeah. Like in this it, we should try to get the whole team in here, and it would be uh, kind of like Brady Bunch. Da, 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 da. We'd all be just looking around at each other. That'd be awesome. <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you, Jose. Thanks Love you, buddy. Everybody. Okay. All right. Happy Valentine's Day. Stitcher. Happy Stitcher. birthday, Vic. Oh, thank you, brother. Happy birthday, Vic. Thank you. See you guys soon. See you next time. Bye.